Greetings, little viewer. He's cracked on the attack and ready to strike back. It's your boy, Good Sir Knight. <laughs> and stick aside, today we're doing a review on the Cry ABS, the Adaptive Vest System. So, around 2013, as I was GTFOing from the military, uh, the SHOT Show there had a little announcement They're like, hey, Cry Precision, guys who make really cool pants are coming out with the uh, ABS system. So around 2010, I think, is when they came out with the uh, first JPC. And they did a lot of work with the Airlight thing when they came out with the SPC, which is what I'd been wearing up until prior to. So I got this a few months ago, and instead of doing an immediate review, I decided to go crawl around the woods and, uh, you know, actually test it out to have a review to go instead of more of a preview sort of setup. So crawl through the woods, put on a whole bunch of patches, take or pou pouches, Take off a whole bunch of pouches, move things around, see how much weight it could actually carry. Because the big thing with the AVS is this whole harness system and the fact that it's adaptable. So, general plate carrier, you got two plates, put a little a few bungees, a little system there, bam, you have a sandwich board sort of set up. This one uses the whole harness, so the rear plate is really locked on back there. The harness does the majority of the heavy lifting. Front plate straps on into that. And uh, yeah, it's a very solid, comfy system. The uh, Harness comes up on the shoulders here, so it gets that support going, goes around, sort of like a bifurcated sort of setup on the back, and then also loops around the uh, ribs. So it holds the plate carrier up nicely, it's fairly comfortable, and um, it is a good deal hotter than the lighter JPCs or VSP series sort of setup, but it does a lot more work. You can carry a lot more with it. So with all that in mind, we've got our AVS on now. Got our rifle slung and it's um, nice and comfy. It's not really digging into anything or causing problems. And most importantly, the big thing here is I've got my tier tactical belt going on and my little um, little dang uh, little pouch here. Uh, M Dom M Dom makes the cool fanny pack. So we got a nice little sort of like Reese setup going on. We got five mags up front, six mag is down here, seventh is in the rifle handgun with extra mags medical and other stuff. We've got a pretty light setup going on ultimately. And with the AVS, it does a lot of different setups. Outside of the uh, harness or the sandwich board setup, you can also do the little, um, what was it, suspender looking thing, which gives you some shoulder padding and a little bit on the back. And you can do more of a medium build with this, whereas the actual harness is good for uh, heavier setups. So, really cool. It is uh, vented pretty nicely. We're going to be talking about all that here in a minute. So, that said, we might as well take our uh, Need a little rifle off here, and let's see, so, let's talk about it. Up on the front, we, you got an admin pouch, admin pouch is particularly popular with the uh, old JPC source up and just kind of been going on since there. The SPC, however, being air light material, kind of like skipped out on it, so if you want an admin pouch, you got to add one on. This one's built in, and neat enough, the uh, AXL company makes this cool little z zipper system that you can install on there, so instead of a nice little rippy velcro noise every time you need access you can make this noise instead which is uh not as noticeable and in here we just got a bunch of uh range cards which are useful for several things range card what do we got we got the range card the tactical combat casualty care and just a few cards that are good knowledge to have medevac reports so it's fun just cool stuff to have for now not really using it for anything too much so I guess I got the uh, PTTs in here because I got my radio set up on this side. But since we're not going to be using that today, it's just going to be chilling. I need somewhere to keep the cable from flapping around. Um, so yeah, you got your sort of standard uh, Velcro setup up on the front underneath that. And the thing with the zipper is it does make this sit a lot neater because there's a bit of a gap up here on the top. So that makes that just a bit cleaner and I ultimately like the uh, cleanliness of it all. You got a buckle up here, so the way this works is you can Attached to the front plate bag is two little flaps. You can set it up for your sandwich board style, but this one is actually tucked in and velcroed in because that's holding the uh, buckle here. And this buckle goes underneath this uh, very, very light and uh, almost flimsy uh, shoulder strap cover that's going over because it's needed for the uh, whole harness system itself because normally it's pretty slender and flat like so, but this one kind of like beefs it up. So you got more of a three fingers of pleasure than just a two going over your shoulders. Helps distribute the weight a bit better. So the quick release buckle is useful. We also got our quick uh, emergency doffing cable here that's running through the back of the uh, triple bend cover bun here. So if we pulled that off, if we hit the buckle and pulled that in one 
Slick motion, we can flip, slide this whole play carry off to the side. Quick and easy. Nice, maritime. Ocean-based water. So, uh, yeah, so that's neat. Um, we got extra mags up on the side. I'm using the triple band cover bun, which isn't the uh, most popular way to do it, but I want to carry my extra mags here. I probably don't need it so much on this side because that's just holding our uh, nifty shiv, but we could always add an extra pouch here if we needed more mags. I like keeping this side relatively clear because it makes it a lot easier to draw the handgun and anything I need off of this side, which is really just the handgun. But if you need the handgun, it's good to have immediate access to the handgun. Reloading. Um, so this is where it took the most work was setting this part up because I needed to make sure I had access to my mags. Because if I move that over to the side just a wee bit, all of a sudden we're having draw issues. So making sure you're facing forward, crouch down, any sort of position, we can still get access to those. Really, really good. Also, don't reload in the open if you can help it. Get to cover. <laughs> That's the uh, cool. If you don't do that, you'll do the uh, Instagram thing where you can pop target, reload in the open because paper target isn't shooting back, but uh, real target, not as nice, not as friendly. So uh, let's see. So we got our standard little triple mag set up here. Just really low profile, a lot beefier. These aren't the, uh, the quickest for access, but they have the highest retention, so things aren't going anywhere. Uh, triple cover bond. So yeah, it basically covers the straps and everything. On the back, like I said, you got the uh, rear plate bag. There's uh, two sort of like bands. They're really tight, horizontal mounted uh, webbing. That actually slips through parts of the uh, rear plate bag and holds it in place. Then you got the uh, metal D-rings. I should just take this off. It'd be a lot easier. You got the metal D-rings up here that you fold that through and that holds everything in place. You, on the... Um, Harness, you wouldn't use those if you're just doing the uh, sort of sandwich board setup. So, we got all that taken care of. Let's actually pop this off here. So, the tab here that's on this uh, magazine flap, it's actually underneath. There's a little slot for it to be placed in instead of sort of uh, loose out on the outside like the uh, JPC I remember did. So, pop this open. I'm actually going to pop this off of both sides. So, when that's free, your harness system comes into these little slots here on the side. And that's what uh, holds it in place. So this actually, because of how uh, robust and thick these uh, sides are, when the plate here is attached, you actually have a good bit of a uh, good bit of room, depending on how uh, how much you like pizza and beer underneath here, and a good amount of room up on the top. There's a little bit of contact up here, but not too much. So that gives you a lot more breathability on the front. Everything off here on the side. There's these aftermarket uh, cry little um, pads you can slap in here. This is basically a uh, soft Velcro ultimately. So those. Slap, uh, stick right on there and they give you a little bit of uh, air channels so you can get somewhat somewhat of ventilation. It's getting into the colder winter time frame out here so now is the perfect time to review this because compared to the SPC it is quite hot and I'd only imagine without any experience with the cage play carrier that is even much much hotter. So um, before we take this off fully, let me actually, I almost forgot to do this. Right? So, one of the big things that make the, uh, that made the AVS a bit more popular particularly recently, because it's not a new carrier, but you had your fun little um, Nairobi SAS guy went out and did a bunch of really cool things, insulate some bodies, so... Cool thing he had was the lap panel, and this, there's just uh, two bits underneath here that you mount that into. So ultimately, you just clip that on. It's got the robust, re robust uh, clips here, and webbing to hold that all together. Doesn't look too crazy, but that gives you some nice little soft armor you can just clip into there. And yeah, so we can take the fanny pack off, and we're doing more Urban clearing, I'd rather have this, but if you're out in the open and crawling through trees and all that nonsense, then I think you get more value out of the fanny pack. Also, they make a hard plate for that. That's kind of nice, because the uh, generally with armor and helmets, your key thing was either the T-box, which is a very small target, or the pelvic girdle. We do this motion. The pelvic girdle would be to uh, make mobile targets not mobile anymore. <laughs> so. The T-Box isn't moving as much boxing-wise, it's a lot easier to hit, you know, so... Yeah, cool thing, so... Pop this off. They also make double bands and single bands. Most people run this with a single band because they're not putting too much crazy stuff on here, and that makes it a bit more breathable and lighter, so... Option... There's lots of options. It's almost as if the uh, vest was adaptable by nature, so... Let me just pop this clip here, and we're free. Ugh. Yeah, so we'll clip that back together and we'll talk about some of this stuff here. So, going from actually, I know you guys can't really see me, but the big thing to do is um, if you 
Connect the Velcro from the cover bun into the uh, ends of the harness because there's uh, some Velcro there. You can simplify your life a lot so these things aren't flipping around. So these are actually really loose and they'll hang back. They don't have a lot of structure to them. So, uh, actually inside the uh, front panel here, there's actually a bit of a kangaroo pouch sort of setup going on. Not a lot, but enough to uh, place your extra bits of your uh, flaps and stuff underneath there so it stays slick and gets better retention. There's the uh, molly bits for adding your parts to. There's little bits for getting the uh, harness through, so that stays comfortable, so you got lots of adaptiveness. Up here, you got that little tab. That's from the uh, clip going through the top, and this one, as you can see, is slick, because that one's actually being used normally. So, come up here. Ah. Here we got our clip and our bits for ratting cables and all that fun stuff. And this one does your standard sort of setup into the uh so yeah, you can see this is relatively thin whereas this is a lot thicker or i guess slender and wide would be more accurate so get a bit more beefiness going on there if you look up on the rear bit of the harness this is a nightmare there we go yeah see there's always a way we got our all our padding here see there's this big old bungee and that's what connects the uh, harnesses bifurcated nature together and when you're wearing that, it actually gives you a lot of breathability. Now, I'm wearing uh, like 34 size pants because I haven't been running as much as I should. But uh, this is the medium harness, and the medium harness even has some overlap with those uh, side arms got going on there. So, with that overlap as a medium, uh, you could probably run a small. Is ultimately what I'm getting at. Small will fit probably a bit more comfortably, and you have more to work with. Um. Here we got the, there's this little D-ring system going on with the harness. As you run this through, we got the cable running through on this side, and on this side we literally just have these extra little um, double end little clips, and that holds everything in place. Uh, the rear plate doesn't have anything special going on, particularly. It's pretty standard uh, stuff going on here. We got a rear plate bag going on, but underneath that you just got your standard little um, Velcro, and then it has this cool little mount up here. So they actually velcros the handle down so it doesn't get a, it's less of a hazard for getting caught on branches and all that nonsense, which was a cool touch. And a, yeah, pretty, pretty standard. The rear plate bag does have a little slot up in the uh, back here, and that's where you take that extra cable and bungee material and you slip that all in there. And it keeps it neat out of the way, not hanging down or exposed or anything crazy, so. And yeah, we can take the rear plate, the, uh, so let's do that now, we might as well, you can take this whole, uh, Rear panel, I know I did this in the uh, review, but I guess I might as well show you guys what it looks like back here. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Gummy. There we go, yeah. So it's pretty simple sort of rear plate stuff. There's your tag, little mounting system, and yeah, neat. And there's a little tab on here in case you need to quick pull that and uh, flip the plate out. So yeah, pretty neat. Ugh. That's the majority of the ABS. There's the uh, metal D-rings. We got our little Cry logo across there, yeah. So these D-rings hold the whole plate to the harness. Um, bit harder to see, but nonetheless important. I'm just gonna be Greco-Roman wrestling this thing the whole way. So you got the uh, tabs. There's one up there, and there's one down there, and those two tabs go across the plate like so. They clip down on this side, and they're made out of that uh, Hypalon material. So there's a little bit of stretch to it, not a lot. But ultimately it holds this rear plate bag very, very, very securely. And that's basically an AVS. So with the whole harness system and the bungee, the biggest thing that it does is you can breathe. And it actually has a lot more stretch to it than other plate carriers I've used. And the weight distribution means you can throw packs on and stuff. So if we were to don this guy real quick here, with all of our gear on I think I gave the hat there, let me try. Come on, you gotta believe, yeah. All right, hat's through. Pop this boy up. You pop that free and you slide this through, like so. Then you slide this guy in here. You do the same on the opposite side. Slide that through there. And you have your other one there. And then you can clip that down in place if you're not going to be removing your plate carrier for the foreseeable future. So, everything up there, you can move that down there. 
pretty comfy, so let's take a look at a pack. Um, where's a good pack? Uh, there's a pack under a bunch of stuff. Ignore all that crashing stuff, that's, uh, that's not important. Pack that down there. Yeah, slide that up over there. I close that. I close that. So, something I had a bit of difficulty with with the SPC and the JPC is that if you're trying to carry a pack, uh, yeah, it kind of sucks because it's a very minimalistic carrier. So this one being more robust and tight to the body has fewer issues with that and it sits pretty nicely over that rear plate. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this pack here we're going to throw this on over here. So the assault panel is nice, just because you can pretty easily add a, uh, whatchamacallit, you can pretty easily add a hydration to it, throw on all your flashbangs and your easy stuff. And with all those together, you got a really simple urban, uh, urban rating setup going on. So with a pack, however, you can throw that boy on. It's going to fit relatively comfy. Yeah, it's actually really, really perfect setup on the pack there although this one is still covered in uh, stuff we don't immediately need we can grab our rifle our riffle throw that guy on and yeah we're out and about doing our reconnaissance we're like oh look i can see off in the distance i see nothing of note actually i see anime uh we're not going to talk about that on camera so yeah you can throw on your whole stuff here and you got your whole pack set up and you can go patrolling a bit jumping Nothing too crazy. I could probably time that down quite a bit. So, the maneuver, you have good uh, weapon control. There's a decent shoulder I found out with the uh, SPC. That those extra bands tended to occasionally get in the way to some degree, but with this one, the plate's very much out of the way. I could get a really good weapon pocket going on, even with the pack going on. So, if we slide that arm free, we can pop this open eventually. Yeah, there we go. Slide these off and you can gain access to your own pack. Good thing about the straps, a lot of people complain they get in the way, but you have access to your own gear, and that's kind of important. And yeah, you can see we got a pretty solid weapon pocket going on here with the way this is set, instead of coming out that way with those uh, wider sort of hypolon straps. So good weapon picture, good weapon alignment, really solid. And I enjoy it very, 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 very much. So the only real downside I've been able to find from crawling through the woods and sweating profusely is that this gets a little a little spicy under there. It gets a little warm. So keep that in mind. If you're wearing the lighter stuff, you'll be able to move faster, carry less. More of a three mag setup. I like this because I can add more stuff up here if need be. I can abandon the belt altogether. And uh, yeah, if I abandon the belt, I can add the extra pouches. They're not going to get in the way of drawing a handgun because there will be no handgun to draw from. And while your fast mag pouch will always be your fastest, if you abandon the belt, then uh, these, as you can see, you're going to have to pop that open. They're going to take a minute to get the mags out of, whereas the traditional nice little straight off the Marine Corps plate carrier pouch, it's a good deal faster. I just find it easier to access altogether. So yeah, that's, um, that's the way I got mine set up anyway. Some, a lot of people are going to have a lot of different setups because it's adaptive. You can do a lot of things with it and you gotta find really what works for you, what's not gonna get in the way and cause issues. So that's the setup I end up going with. So you guys might like it, some people might not. Some people are significantly taller than me, some people are quite unfortunately shorter. <laughs> so that's all I got for you guys. Um cheers, stay silverous, and uh uh like, comment, subscribe. Uh I like to wear a lot of patches in my videos, and I have seen some people be like, ah, what's with all the patches? And ultimately, there's a lot of cool guys out there making a lot of cool patches, and ultimately I want to show them off. Generally, I would run as few patches as necessary. But, Stormcrow, legit. Alton la France. So, cheers everyone, I'll catch you in the next video, and a special thank you, shout out to the Patreon supporters, both uh, the Weepy Lamb, who does Airsoft out here in Okinawa as well, and um, Dark Magic... 96, who occasionally edits my videos when she's not insanely busy. Which, unfortunately, she's been insanely busy, but hopefully at some point in the near future we'll have actual video editing instead of just me doing a single run several times because I got a migraine through the last time I filmed this yesterday and I ended up having to take the whole day off and just sleeping, so. Gucci, cash money, um, painkillers are your friends. 
in limited doses. Uh, always follow recommended prescription procedures and uh, don't overdose. Cheers, stay chivalrous. I'll see you guys later. And uh, yeah, um, stay Gucci. And uh, don't be frivolous with money. That's the other thing. Uh, it's, it's important, trust me. It'll come back to you later. Peace!